Hey, hello. You're stuck in trouble with Wolf Gorlick, Few Minutes Roofing, and IT and IT Security. Today, looking at micro segmentation and uh, and some of the tricks that uh, VMware NSX uses to implement it. Now, way back when, uh, I was responsible for a web farm, and way back when, this web farm had a vulnerability. Shocking, I know. <laughs> and uh, and way back when, I had designed like the traditional like uh, DMZ uh, network, right? So. Web farm's running. So the bad guys are scanning for vulnerabilities, as they do. They find the vulnerability and they they exploit it, right? So the web server's here, the network's here. Bad guys exploit it and it tries to call back. Now, the way you set up those networks is you prohibit outbound traffic. The web server can't call back. Shouldn't be instantiating any connections of its own. Should only be responding, really, to web traffic. And therefore, when it did that, Boom, the alarms went off, and boom, the mousetrap fell, and yay, we all celebrated because we had stopped a security incident with proper network screening. This is a fundamental. The tip for you is one of the top, most fundamental ways to secure a network is by segmenting it off into logical units and putting in place rules around those units to make sure that the only expected traffic in and out comes through. Uh, it sounds simple, but Oftentimes when we do network segmentation, as a matter of fact, someone replied to me on social media when I was talking about this topic, they're like, ah, yes, segmentation, where you have a VLAN with an any, any rule, and micro segmentation, where you have 2,000 VLANs with any, any rules. <laughs> that was Sam, uh, and he's spot on, because so oftentimes when people implement these, they don't implement them right. Now, we move to the day and age where we're getting ever more granular about our security controls. The day and age of saying, okay, we've got a segment with all our web servers and this segment with all our manufacturing equipment. That is still really good if you don't have anything. Don't get me wrong, start going there. But we're moving more and more to ephemeral networks, to ephemeral designs, and to having the controls very, very granular. Hence, micro-segmentation. Micro-segmentation is effectively segmenting and firewalling around an individual host. Now you may go, wait, Wolf, why wouldn't you just use host-based firewalls? I'm glad you asked. There's a couple of reasons why micro-segmentation uh, is better than host-based firewalls. For one, uh, implemented correctly, it can be much, much quicker because you're running on the hypervisor layer uh, if you're doing something like VMware NSX, which means it's running close to kernel, which means it's running very, very quickly. So performance is up. Um, two, two, because it's on a virtual network instead of within the host, um, you have some additional security controls, right? If that host is compromised, heck, if someone's just working and they're an administrator, um, oftentimes they'll be like, I'm troubleshooting, I will remove all firewall rules, right? I mean, admins do that. DevOps people do that all the time. And that ability to turn off the firewall is no longer present if the firewall is not host-based. This is even more important when that host does get compromised. Because one of the first things the attacker do is, I'll turn off the firewall, and I'll turn off the antivirus, and I'll turn off all the security controls, right? So, point one of having it on the host is you isolate it towards, um, away from the host itself, giving you better control, giving you better security. As I already mentioned, it's better performance, but it's also better for manageability and for logging. From a manageability perspective, sure, Linux has host-based firewalls, and if you're running Puppet and Chef, you can push out rules. If you're running Windows, they've had host-based firewalls for, what, 10 years now? It's part of Defender. Um, have you tried running group policy to control them? You can. You can. With all the same caveats of group policy, it's not often as easy as it looks, especially if you're at scale. Um, however, both Windows and Linux-based firewalls um, have always suffered from centralized logging, the ability to move it out onto the hypervisor layer and tap into that and put your logging there and your monitoring there. Big boon, big benefit, as opposed to trying to configure logging individually on all these different hosts, especially when you have hosts spinning up and spinning down a thousand ephemeral instances which is maybe 200 core servers and 800 that spin up and spin down, depending on what you're doing. That flexibility is really key in private cloud infrastructure. And that flexibility and the ability to have those controls on the security layer um, close to the hypervisor allows you to have that centralized control and do it very quickly and automated. And that gets to the last thing, which is creating policies, creating sensible policies. Web servers should always be able to talk this way. Don't talk out. Um, domain 
controller should always be able to talk that way. And therefore, when you instantiate a VPN, you can just use that policy to create it and plug and play it. Uh, Microsegmentation, I think, uh, is going to change a lot of things and allow us to harden a lot of the controls down, which will be good because even in the best of cases, going back to my web server example, HTTPS and HTTP traffic is open, and the vulnerability is open over that. And had they used a web shell, it would have been game over. Even in the best cases, when we open these communication paths, um, we're still vulnerable. But, but, we're so much less vulnerable because now the attackers have to only play within the rules that we've allowed them and only play within the bounds we've created. All right, what do you think about microsegmentation? Uh, hit me up, comments, social media. Cheers.